Now at five, baseball fans are showing up in droves to support Southern Miss baseball. USM is taking on Ole Miss at Pete Taylor Park. Details ahead of the sold out game straight ahead. And it's hot out there. The first look weather team is out live on location showing you the very warm weather that's about to come in the chances for rain later this week. Plus, the rate of inflation is declining. We'll have a breakdown of the new report and why some experts say the drop may not be enough to bring down gas and grocery prices. Your news at five starts now. We're proud to always be on your side. This is WDAM 7 News at 5. Good evening, Pine Belt, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Carrie Leggett Brown. Southeast Mississippi Rural Health Initiative held its annual free checkup day in honor of National Women's Health Week. Alongside the center's medical experts, Hattiesburg Mayor Toby Barker signed a proclamation highlighting this week. WDAM 7's Marissa McCardle explains the importance of keeping your health on track. With the Women's Health Center providing free health screenings, Mayor Toby Barker says this event is a good representation of the need to visit your doctor on a regular basis. One of the, the downsides and consequences of COVID, aside from the illness and the loss of life, is that a lot of people took their own health for granted because they were afraid to get back out and to go do the preventive things you need to do. And part of National Women's Health Week, I think, is, is putting that mindset back in folks that you got to take your health seriously. You gotta be proactive. You have to keep up with it. Dr. Rebecca Roberts from the center says the screenings are in areas such as blood pressure, dental, and HIV testing. It means a lot to the women of Hattiesburg, women in the Pine Belt. Um, you know, it's been a rough two years, and it is really nice to be able to encourage and empower women to come out and start taking care of themselves. All of us know women who um, who don't take time for themselves, don't take care of themselves. And it really is important um, to the, the role that women play in, in society for us to, to make sure that we take care of ourselves and that we help others take care of themselves. The health screenings will take place at all seven of the center's locations and will go until this Friday. And it's a time for women to focus on um, on their health. When we give them results of their health screenings today, we are um, trying to emphasize the importance of the abnormal readings so they can follow up um, appropriately afterwards and uh, kind of push them in the right direction. In the Pine Belt, Marissa McArdle, WDAM 7, on your side. Well, the health screenings start at 8 a.m. and end at 5 p.m. And you can find a list of the screening locations on our website, WDAM.com. Well, the president of the Economic Development Authority of Jones County discussed inflation and the local economy with the Kiwanis Club of Laurel today. Ross Tucker talked to the group about how inflation is affecting the local economy, but on the other hand, told the group Laurel and Jones County have seen a great deal of success in attracting new businesses and jobs to the area, and tourism is also up. They might come and take a day trip, uh, spend two or three days in and around Laurel and, and visit uh, other attributes throughout the county on their way to uh, New Orleans or, or some of those other spots. So uh, it could be where it's a, it's a little bit different alternative as it relates to um, a bigger market that they were, might be going to. Now they might scale back and come to a place like here. Well, the steady growth of industry, education, and culture is raising the diverse population of more than 68,000 people living in Jones County. Well, right now, the Golden Eagles are gearing up to go head-to-head -head against Ole Miss. Our sports director, Taylor Curette, is there as fans begin to pack the peat. Taylor, what can you tell us before the game? Yeah, it's just about under an hour here from game time between Southern Miss and Ole Miss. You would think we're in the seventh inning. This place is already packed. Probably a record crowd we're going to have on hand tonight to watch the 14th ranked Golden Eagles take on the Ole Miss Rebels. This is the 142nd meeting between these two in-state rivals. Southern Miss took the last meeting back in April up in Pearl. They took down the Rebels, so Ole Miss comes in with some motivation. Southern Miss, of course, has a NCAA regional host aspirations so every win down the stretch here is huge they got seven games left including their last non-conference game tonight 
against Ole Miss. Should be a great night of baseball here in Hattiesburg at Pete Taylor Park. We'll get you ready for everything. I have more coverage for you coming up in our 6 o'clock show as well, live here from Pete Taylor Park. But for now, I'm Taylor Curet reporting. I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. All right, thanks so much, Taylor. Well, Major League Baseball's World Series trophy is in Hattiesburg, and you have a chance to see it. The trophy will be at Pete Taylor Park during tonight's Southern Miss baseball game. A game ticket is required to view the trophy, and fans are invited to take pictures with the World Series trophy until 8 p.m. And Southern Miss is one of 151 stops across the southeast on the Braves World Champions Tour. The Braves are doing this tour to celebrate 151 years of Braves baseball. The stage is set for Southern States Soccer's first home game of the season. The team will take on New Orleans this Saturday at 7.30 p.m. at the Oaks Training Center in Oak Grove. This marks the Hattiesburg Club's second season playing in the National Premier Soccer League. Now, After a tough road loss against Jacksonville last weekend, the Stars are fired up to take on New Orleans and hope the Hattiesburg community will come out to support its semi-professional team. It's going to be a tough game against New Orleans this weekend. They won their regular uh, open opening game against Mobile, so we, we know it's going to be a tough game and hopefully we can get a lot of people out and put on a good performance. Anytime we play away, everybody gets a lot of people out to watch them. What we do want is, is when those teams come here for them to understand that this is a, a, a sports culture and a soccer culture here as well. General admission tickets are $10 and can be purchased at the gate or ahead of time at 3ssoccer.com. Pre-K through 12th grade students get in free and tickets are $5 for college students. All right, things are heating up in more ways than one and the Pine Belt and Patrick, how is it looking out there for folks getting ready to head out to the baseball game? Hey guys, we're live out here this evening at the campus of USM. We're overlooking the campus right now from atop the parking garage this evening. And I'm going to tell you, it's a hot evening if you're coming out to watch uh, Southern Miss take on uh, USM or, or to come see that Atlanta Braves trophy, which that's the biggest thing I'm excited about. Of course, USM doing really good in baseball as well. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to need a couple of things. One, you're going to need these. These are called sunglasses. Secondly, you're going to need a water bottle or at least a lot of water. And three sunscreen that way you don't get burned up because it is pretty warm out here and the sun is not going to set until after seven o'clock so uh, if you're sitting in the stands it's definitely going to be a warm evening now let's go show you what the temperatures are out there right now we'll go ahead and head over to the weather graphics at the moment currently at forest general hospital they're sitting at 90 degrees this afternoon it's a warm day not a cloud in sight anywhere so uh, i'm definitely feeling that heat i'm gonna tell you we made it to 90 nowhere near the record though we were four degrees shy which which was 94 set back in 1902. Now, as we look at our temperatures right now, still 90 degrees in the Hub City, 89 in Petal, 89 in Laurel. It's 90 out towards Foxworth, 90 in Foxworth, and 89 right now out towards Prentice. We'll take a full look at that forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys, back over to you. All right, thank you, Patrick. Well, inflation is decreasing, but likely not enough for you to notice the difference at the cash register. That's according to a new consumer price report released today, which showed some mixed messaging when it comes to inflation. Gloria Pazmino explains while the peak may be behind us, Americans are still grappling with high prices at the pump and supermarkets. A bit of a reprieve, at least for now. The U.S. inflation rate declined for the first time since August. And while prices still increased, it's happening at a slower pace than in previous months. I'm a little hesitant to call it good news because we don't know, of course, where it's going to go in the next few months. According to new Bureau of Labor Statistics numbers released Wednesday, the consumer price index was up 8.3 percent in the 12 months ended in April a decrease from the 8.5 percent recorded in March, which marked the highest inflation level in more than 40 years. The numbers suggest the inflation peak could be behind us, but major global events continue to shake up the economy. Of course, the war in the Ukraine uh, that Putin is waging is having an effect on energy prices in particular. That means Americans may not feel an improvement in their wallets just yet. 
housing, food, and plane tickets saw some of the steepest price increases. Gas prices are higher today than they were a few weeks ago. Families are paying over $150 in many cases to fill their vehicle, and they're angry about it. America is fighting on two fronts. At home, it's inflation and rising prices. The pressures that have kept inflation rising for months are still strong, a problem for American households already strapped for cash. In New York, I'm Gloria Pasmino reporting. The FDA says it will allow baby formula supply to be released from the shuttered Abbott Nutrition Facility on a case-by-case -case basis. In February, the agency warned consumers not to use certain powdered infant formula products from Abbott due to the contamination concerns, causing the company to call for a voluntary recall. Now, soon after those recalls, parents began reporting that they were having problems finding powdered infant formula. Now, since that time, the FDA has has been working with the company and other manufacturers to bring safe products to consumers. Now the facility could be back to normal operations in as soon as two weeks. And sunglasses and shade needed for this week as the sun and hot weather continues, but we could see a few showers on Friday and Saturday and even Sunday. Patrick will have a complete look at the forecast coming up next. Then later, new research shows continuously testing positive for COVID could result in more severe outcomes later on. Hey guys, it's a hot evening out here at the campus of USM. I'm out here with the WDM7 Storm Tracker, and we're not tracking storms today. We're tracking a lot of heat across the area. If you're heading out to the USM Ole Miss baseball game, you need to prepare. It's going to be a warm evening. So shorts, flip-flops, short sleeves, be sure to bring some water, even the sunscreen. You're going to need it all out here this evening. Now, we were thinking we were going to get close to record, but uh, for today, we did not make it close at all. We'll show you that here in a second. But first, let's head over to the weather graphics right now. And as you can see this evening, if you're heading out to the game, temperature's 89 when this thing starts off around 6 o'clock. And we'll cool down into the 70s by 10 o'clock once the game wraps up this evening. So uh, be prepared. It's definitely going to be a warm one across the area. As we take a live look here at the campus of USM, not too far away from where I'm at right now it's 90 degrees out there in the Mississippi Power Sky Cam. Winds are out of the north at 5 there and as we head out to Petro Nissan it's also 90 degrees there. Looking around the rest of the Pine Belt it is a warm day and you're starting to notice some of that humidity coming in. The muggy meter sitting into the sticky category as dew points creep up into the mid 60s. That's been the one difference today. A lot more humidity in the air and that's making that 90 feel a little warmer. 89 right now in Laurel, 89 in Columbia, 90 still in Oak Grove. It's 90 in Lumberton and 90 out towards state line. And as we take a look at what to expect for the rest of this evening, temperatures will cool down from the 80s back down into the 70s by 9 o'clock, and we're expecting clear skies across the area. Overnight, we'll see temperatures getting down into the upper 60s, kind of a mild start tomorrow morning. It will be mostly clear across the area, but watch as we go into the afternoon hours. We start to see a few clouds roll in. Temperatures still get hot, 86 around lunchtime, and then as we go into the afternoon, highs topping out around 90. But you notice something different different that we haven't shown in a while here on Futurecast, the possibility of a few pop-up showers. So we're going to be watching for that tomorrow, so be on the lookout. Uh, but the, like I said, the best chance of those rain showers is going to be late into the afternoon, mainly after 1 o'clock, 20 to 30 percent at best, but not everybody gets in on the action. But if you don't get a shower tomorrow, don't worry, because we will still have rain chances as we go into Friday and again as we go into the weekend. Friday, Saturday, we'll have a, both a 30 percent chance of rain, not a washout, just splash or dash variety. Temperatures will stay into the low 90s through the weekend. And looking ahead, you see, I think Friday and Saturday is the best chances of rain. Then after that, we start to dry things out. And guess what happens after that? We're going to see a big warm up. Another ridge of high pressure builds on top of us, another heat bubble, and we're looking hot. In fact, we're already forecasting 96 as we go towards next Wednesday. Yeah, that's not going to be fun right there. And because that heat bubble builds up, it means we're going to be cutting off those rain chances as well. So uh, your grass, any plants, Plants outside, plants or flowers, they're going to need water definitely for next week. We'll give it back to you in the studio, guys. All right. Thank you so much, Patrick. After the break, health officials worry they may be asking the wrong questions when it comes to assessing someone's risk of suicide, specifically when it comes to gun owners. The full story when we come back.
Well, suicide is a leading cause of death in the U.S. According to the CDC, killing tens of thousands of Americans each year. And a new study suggests identifying who's at risk varies based on whether the person owns a firearm. Mandy Gaither has more on the findings and what researchers say needs to change in today's Health Minute. A public health crisis, suicide in the U.S. Our sort of traditional ways of screening for suicide risk is to ask people, are you having thoughts about suicide? In a new study published in JAMA Network Open, researchers from the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center found current screening questions may not be enough to identify gun owners who are having thoughts of suicide. U.S. adults who report being gun owners um, are much less likely to report having thoughts about suicide if they've recently made a suicide attempt. They were much more likely, however, to say that they had been thinking about ways or methods to attempt suicide. We're in essence asking the wrong questions. Since there's no one way that a person thinks about suicide, this study's lead author, Craig Bryan, says there's no one set of suicide screening questions right for everyone, and that gun owners and those who don't have a gun may have suicidal thoughts differently. Perhaps a better question is to ask, have you been thinking about ways that you might attempt suicide? In 2020, 53% of all suicides involved firearms, according to the CDC. Brian says locking guns away, removing immediate access to the firearm can save lives, but so can changing how we screen for suicide risk. If we only focus on one piece of the puzzle, then we'll continue to miss a lot of people at risk. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. And for anyone at risk of suicide, help is available 24-7 by calling 800-273-TALK or texting 741-741. U.S. drug overdose deaths hit a record high in this year. Now, new CDC data indicates that nearly 108,000 people died of drug overdoses last year in 2021, and that's 50% higher than in 2019. About two thirds of last year's deaths involve fentanyl or other synthetic opioids. The director of the National Institute on Drug Abuse says drug overdose rates have been steadily increasing for decades, but researchers say the pandemic made the problem worse. Well, people who continue to test positive for COVID-19 could have more severe outcomes. That's according to a study from researchers at Northwestern Medicine. Now, they found that patients who still tested positive for COVID-19 more than 14 days after their initial positive test were more likely to experience delirium and have longer stays in the hospital and were less likely to be discharged home compared to those without persistent shedding of the virus. Of the more than 900 study participants, more than 40% were found to have persistent viral shedding. All right, after the break, we'll take one last look at your forecast. Plus, if you try to stick to healthy foods, today is your day to cheat. We're going to explain on the other side of the break. Stick with us. All right, let's take a look at the forecast for tonight. It's going to be kind of muggy overnight, temperature around 67 degrees, partly cloudy. And during the day tomorrow, it's going to be uh, partly cloudy, only a 20% chance for a shower high around 92. And looking at the 10 day forecast, the heat gets miserable next week and gets hot. So look at that 96 by next Wednesday and no rain next week. I'm not looking forward to that 96, <sighs> no. Rex. All right, saying no to delicious but unhealthy foods can be a challenge, a real challenge, but not today. That's because May 11th is National Eat What You Want Day. It's meant for people to have a day to indulge a little without feeling guilty or regret. And think of it as a way of satisfying a sweet tooth or the munchies. And to celebrate, go ahead and treat yourself to your favorite dessert or snack. Have breakfast for dinner, eat out at that restaurant you've been wanting to try, or whip up a delicious s'more is bored when it comes to food. The world is yours today, food wise. So if you could eat anything today, Rex, what would it be? What would it be? Peanut butter pie. Peanut butter pie. I, I love it. Peanut butter pie. I, I don't. I don't eat sugar anymore. Yeah. I, I do love. I think you and I are both uh, pretty healthy eaters. Yeah, we're pretty I would healthy. just, if I had a cookie in front of me right now, I would just take a bite of a cookie. <laughs> I'm not that adventurous. 
I'm like Rex, I don't do much sugar, so I'll just bite a cookie, I guess. All right, thank you, Weather. Thank you so much for joining us. We do appreciate you. Be well, stay safe. We'll see you at 6.